Hey family, thank you for joining us. We want to remind you that awesome things happen when we worship God. There's a shift that begins to happen in our minds and in our hearts. So we want to invite you to worship with us and watch what God does. That silences the enemy. Let praise be the weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We see your name in the dark, it changes everything. We claim that. Inside of me, let it rise, let faith arise. Whoa, you'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. We cannot survive. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We, we also count on you for all things. I encourage you to trust the Lord with every single thing that's going on in your life, family. I count on one thing, the same God that never
never fails will not fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same god who's never late is working all things out he's working all things out
Hi everyone, I'm Vince. And I'm Becky from the Rock Living Room to yours. Welcome, thank you so much for joining us today on this beautiful Sunday. Yeah, and whether it's your first <laughs> time here or you've been with us for a while, we wanna invite you to take a look around, see what's new, because we always have so many exciting things going on. Go ahead and visit sdrock.com slash info or text info to 52525 to learn more. Yes, and I wanna remind you about two ways to get plugged into the church, wherever you are in the world. One is through Life Class. This class gives the opportunity to learn more about who The Rock Church is, how we got started, and really where we're going with Save, Equip, Send, where this mission is leading us. You'll also get to discover how God has uniquely designed you to make a difference in the lives of those around you. Yeah, and for our friends joining us from outside of San Diego and all over the world, we have an online campus-specific class that we wanna invite you to. We also have a special one day life class. Hey. You can take all four in one Get it all coming done. up on Saturday, <laughs> August 28th, for those of you who are in San Diego. To learn more about these life class opportunities, visit sdrock.com slash life class. Text the word LIFE to 52525. Yes, and the second great way is to get plugged in through groups. A lot of them meet online, so you can get plugged in wherever you're joining us from. And now is a great time to get to start thinking about getting into one, if you haven't already, because it's really, it's fall. Fall's coming yep. up, right? And it's a time to gear up and get those fresh rhythms and routines going. One of the best rhythms we can have in our lives is the rhythm of community. So if you're interested in start starting or joining a group or learning more, visit sdrock.com slash groups or text groups to 52525. Yep, family, we're ready to get into the sermon. Can't wait. You know what to do, family. The message is about to start. So get out your pen, your paper, lean in and share this message. What's up, Rock family? God bless you and welcome to church. So glad that you're with us. Uh, I hope you're excited. I know that I am. My name is Travis. I am one of the pastors here. In fact, I'm the campus pastor at our Point Loma location. But we know that we're reaching you all across the world and wherever you're gathering from, you need to know that God has something so significant for you today. Uh, just know that there's healing that's going to take place. God's going to speak to you exactly where you're at, right in the middle of your situation. So I want you to hang on. And there's a real specific word for you. In fact, the topic that I'm bringing today is on anxiety and depression. And this is a real specific topic. I, I know that it's a heavy topic, but it's one that personally I've been wanting to, to dive into for some time. Uh, my wife, Vanessa, and I, we have dealt with anxiety and depression, especially recently in this past season through COVID, through 2020, and I don't want to give it too much credit, but my wife as a first grade school teacher found herself trying to navigate through distance learning and feeling the burden and, and the weight of trying to make sure the kids get what they need, the parents get the support they have. Uh, and so we, we, we kind of found ourselves in the kitchen one day, really not one day, but multiple days, frustrated, feeling attention, some tears and going, man, what's happening with the rhythms in our life? Let's take a, a step back and, and, and assess what's happening in our hearts between us. And we realized, man, there were some real tough moments, anxious moments, moments that we could only describe as deep sadness. And I, I would call that moments of depression. And I don't know how many of you joining us today have been dealing with thoughts that are overwhelming, thoughts that are anxious, thoughts that are overwhelming about a relationship. Maybe it's your financial situation or lack thereof finances. There's no money in the account. There's a job loss. Or maybe you're anxious and overwhelmed about a future decision that hasn't even happened. And so you're worried now. And if it doesn't happen, you're going to be worried again. Or maybe you're thinking about the current state of the world. And just this past week, there's been so much tragedy, so much heaviness. And thinking about the earthquake in Haiti and all the families that have been displaced and uh, trying to make plans and how they're going to take care of their families and what are they going to do for their communities. Thinking about what's happening uh, across the, the world from us. I'm in San Diego, but many of you are joining us from across the world. Maybe you're joining us from Afghanistan. Uh, you need to know that we're thinking about you. And as you're maybe wrestling through, what does this mean for me? And what does this mean for my family? What does this mean for uh, me? Maybe you're a, uh, someone in the military and you're having to navigate through all these thoughts and just thinking about life in general. It's overwhelming, it's weighty. And so if you do struggle with anxiousness, anxiety or depression, this message is for you. You need to know that you're not alone. And that's the lie from the enemy that what you're dealing with is only your deal, you're dealing with it. You're the only one that's dealing with it. But it's not the truth, the truth is that you're not alone. In fact, I wanna read these stats to you from 2020 and just a couple of things really just magnify the reality that Anxiety and depression are really its own kind of pandemic all by itself. And here's a couple. 
Now this past year, divorce rates went up 25%. Antidepressant meds went up 300%. Mental health hotline went up 900%. That, that's, that's, that's incredible to me and not in a good way, but that people are reaching, asking questions. Can I get help? What do I do with what I'm going through? Where do I go? Who do I turn to? The CDC said that one out of every four students considered suicide. Now, if you're a parent like me and I got two kids, you can just do the math. If you've got five kids, you've got four kids, that means maybe one of your kiddos had such a devastating year, they thought about what would it be like if I wasn't here? That breaks my heart. The CDC also said that one out of every 10 for all other adults considered suicide. It's such a serious topic. And I wanna make sure that you know that as a pastor, I'm coming from a shepherd's heart. And we're looking at this thing holistically. But we're taking a step back saying we're going to address this holistically. That, that means that there's a, a few people that need to get some physician assistance. There's many people that need to get prescribed medicine, uh, seek out counseling and coaching, uh, and help from their, their local church, from your local church. And maybe that's us, or maybe there's a, a church around you that can support you. And so holistically, we would say and support, get the help that you need. But today as, as a pastor, my role is to lead and feed God's people towards Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to just give you some practical handles. Um, I want to encourage you though, first and foremost, that anxiety, depression are not a label, a name, or your identity. It's just a signal that something's off. And maybe you write that down. And maybe you type that in the chat if you're joining us online. Or if you're at home and you're kind of journaling with your family. Maybe you write that one thing down. Maybe you just came for that. That anxious and depressed are not your name. They're not your label, no matter what you think. They're not your identity, and no matter what the enemy has tried to convince you of. It's a signal that something is off. And so think about your life. What feels off? Are you just working and working and working, and now you're driving yourself into the ground? Are, are, you, are you chasing the dollar, hustling and hustling and hustling, and, and now you're, you're, missing, you're missing sleep and, and you're burnt out? Are you comparing your life to other people's lives? You're seeing the, the people go on the best date nights, and, and, and you and your spouse, you, you haven't been on a date night in weeks. Or maybe your kids made the all-star team, or th their kids made the team, yours didn't. They got picked, yours didn't. They're doing great in school, your kids aren't. M maybe, uh, maybe you're... you're you're, you're, you're considering that all these negative thoughts in my mind, they're just too much. And I can't help but just meditate on them day and night. I can't get my mind out of the negative thoughts. I'm just, I'm just, just chewing on them. I'm, 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 I've inhaled every negative thought. It's on my mind. It's in my heart. It's in my spirit. It's manifesting in my body. I'm anxious. I'm in pain. Maybe you've completely forgotten about God. And you can't remember a thing that he's done for you in the past. It happens that quick. Any of those mistakes can take us off track and toward the dark path of anxiety and depression. It's really that easy and it's really that fast. So the question we're asking today is if there's some things that take us off course and off track and maybe you're sensing that right now, the anxiety, the depression, it's not your name, identity, it's not a label, but it's a signal, something's off and you're sensing it now. There, there, there's some patterns in my life I gotta figure out and they're taking me off track. So the question we're answering tonight and today, or whenever you're watching this, is what keeps us on track with God? What keeps us on track? Well, the Apostle Paul, he gives us that answer. And, and if you've got your Bible with you, get your Bible app, I want you to open it up into the New Testament, into Philippians 4, verse 6. He says, don't be anxious about anything, but instead, by prayer in all situations, present your request to God. Don't be anxious for anything. But instead, in every situation, pray. And so we're not going to be anxious any longer. Instead, we're going to pray. The title of my message for you is Anxious to Pray. Because if we're going to be anxious for anything, it's going to be to pray. In fact, let's do that right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment together with our church, wherever people are joining us from, whether in their living rooms or they're watching this later in their car, they're with their kids, and they're across the world, thinking about the weight and the pressure that may be surrounding them, just the reality of what's happening in the world. And it feels heavy. Lord, I pray that you would lead us out of anxiety, away from depression and towards your perfect peace. And we pray that in the matchless name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Um, 
my son recently turned four years old. In fact, in fact last week he turned four. Uh, and one of his favorite things to do is dress up in ridiculous costumes. And, and, and he loves superheroes, especially uh, Spider-Man. And so on his birthday last week, I woke up at 5.45 in the morning, went to the garage and did my very best not to wake him and his sister up, but got one of those little portable helium tanks and started blowing up balloons. And these aren't the exact ones, but I brought these because I think it's just a great picture of, of what a life looks like, the fragility of life dealing with anxiety and depression. Uh, too much helium, and I experienced this in the garage, he, uh, uh, filling up balloons for my son, and they pop. In fact, I, I popped a couple. But too much pressure, too, too much inside, it cannot be contained, you pop, you explode. Not enough hope in sight, not enough feeling it, and you can begin to sink deep, deep, deep into sadness, depression, anxiety. It's weighted you down. It's fragile. What a great picture. And I, I think the Apostle Paul, as we're going to see in Philippians, could relate to this. See, his goal um, was to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Specifically, he wanted to go to Rome. That was his dream. If I can get to Rome, I can reach the world. They had all the, uh, the roadways. They had all the e-commerce. They had all the trade. They had the most influential leaders of the, of the world in Rome. And he thought, if I can get there and I can tell people and demonstrate the good news of Jesus Christ, we'll reach everybody. But on the way there, while he's demonstrating the power and the miraculous, he's beaten, he's stoned, he's shipwrecked multiple times. He's thrown in prison. He's out of prison. In fact, he was whipped with a cat of nine tails five times. You may recognize that, that, uh, that phrase, cat of nine tails, because Jesus himself was whipped 39 times because 40 was supposedly enough to kill a man. Well, Paul received that lashing five times. 39 lashes five times. So if there's anybody in the scriptures besides Jesus who can understand the weight of pressure, and what it's like to be beaten and ridiculed, spat on, betrayed, harassed, only for doing good, it would be the Apostle Paul. And in this story, he's preaching the gospel, has found himself back in prison again, shackled and chained on house arrest to a prison guard. Circumstances would say, Paul is in a world of anxiety. Too much pressure to the point he may, he, he may just burst with anxiousness, not enough hope in sight, ready to just deflate into depression. Uh, but then he writes Philippians 4, verses 4 through 13. This is what it says. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. And here's our verse for the day and our, our, our focus. But in every situation by prayer. Somebody shout prayer wherever you're at. If you're, if you're online, uh, uh, just, just with us, type in the chat, prayer. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, Present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. See, uh, family, sometimes you won't understand the ways of God. His ways are so above our ways. And Paul says, there's a peace that God offers that even you and I won't understand. It transcends all understanding. It'll guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. In verse 9, whatever have you learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. That means don't read about it, be about it, do it. And the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. Now, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Now see, Paul says, I can do all of that. I, I know what it is to be hungry. I know what it is to, to, to not be hungry. I, I can rejoice in the Lord Always, again, I say rejoice. I don't know if you remember that song from Sunday school. I grew up in Sunday school. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. And so I can imagine Paul doing that at moments. And he's saying, I can do that. I can have plenty and be okay. 
I can sing and rejoice and, and be okay. You can remember me or not remember me because I've learned the secret to contentment. Maybe you write that word down. See, Paul says, I've learned the secret to contentment. When I'm overwhelmed and I'm under pressure, uh, whether my li life feels good or I feel fragile. I, I, and you know what fragile is. I gave you that picture here. F -f fragile means if she just says one more comment, I will burst in anxiety. If my kids just have one more meltdown in the grocery store, I will lose my mind. I'll lose my mind. If, if my family member asks me if I'm still single again, I will lose it. In fact, you, you may just be in that situation where you just need, you need six feet. You've never needed six feet more than you do right now because you were about to explode. You just can't take the pressure. It's so much on you. But Paul says, even then, I've learned the secret to contentment. I've learned what it is to be content in every situation. And it starts in verse 6. I don't know if you caught it. But in verse 6, he says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by what? By prayer. Somebody shout prayer wherever you're at. You're driving, say prayer. You're online, type in the chat, say prayer. Prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. You see, Paul doesn't start with contentment and then land with prayer. See, Paul prays and then he finds perfect peace and he finds contentment. Paul knows the secret of praying first. Paul knows the power of praying first. I want you to write this down if you're taking notes. If you're not taking notes, take notes. Prayer must be our first response and not our last resort. I gotta say that again because I want you to get this. Prayer must be our first response and not our last resort. When I'm falling apart and when I've got it all together, I'm gonna pray. Prayer's gotta be my first response, not my last resort. When I have no money and when the bank, bank account is full, I'm still going to pray first. When I lost my job or when God gave me a better one, I'm still going to pray first. When he broke my heart, when, 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 she, when she didn't call back or when he finally proposed to me after this many years, I'm still going to pray first. No matter the situation, it doesn't matter. I got the secret to contentment and it starts by praying first. I'm not, I'm not waiting to pray. I can't wait to pray. That's a different spirit, a different mindset. Prayer must be our first response, not our last resort. And so I want, to give you, I want to give you five reasons why we pray first and see how that shifts things. See how that helps you navigate through anxiousness, anxiety, and depression. Here's number one. Prayer replaces worry. Prayer replaces worry. In Matthew 6, verse 27, this is the voice of Jesus, the words of Jesus himself. He says, who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And then you go down a few more verses in Matthew 34 and he continues and Jesus says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. How many can testify to that? Absolutely. You know that. Uh, each day has trouble of its own. And, and how many of you and me and us and your family and your friends and your coworkers can add life by worrying? You can't. You can't add an hour. And so Jesus says, then why worry about tomorrow? Don't worry twice because tomorrow has enough trouble of its own. I remember um, taking my, my daughter, who's now almost six years old, uh, taking her home from the hospital. And that first kid, parents, you, you know this, you feel super unqualified. Like, I can't even believe they let me take my child home. Like, there's no instructions. You're just trying to buckle this, 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 this contraption they call a car seat. And it's got straps behind it. And there's this little, little, little baby. And, and I remember seeing her in the car seat. And she just kind of, you know, it's just like this. Just like this. And I'm thinking, I, 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 do, I, do I drive with the hazard lights? What do we do? Right? <laughs> can I get a police barricade and can they take me home? I mean, just freaking out because you're just wanting to do it right. But I remember going home and trying to get my daughter in the swaddle. And, and if, if, you were, if you remember this or you're going through this right now, this will bless you. But I found that there was this thing called the Velcro swaddle. Ooh, that blessed me. Because I was stressed and worried trying to get my daughter to sleep. And, and, and when they're little, you can't tell if they're asleep. You can't tell if they're even breathing. <laughs> I would go up to my daughter and I would, I would just, I would, I would just, I, she even, I, I couldn't even tell she was breathing. I would get so close, I could, just, I could just smell her and the baby smells so good. But I was just trying to tell if, if, she, if she breathed and my wife would be just <clears throat> sound asleep. And here I am 
just up late at night, just hours. And people even tell me, Travis, you look super tired. The kids must be up. I'm like, no, I'm up. I'm up. My, my daughter is sleeping great. I'm just stressed out. I, I'm just stressed out. And here's what, what, what God showed me, that what we worry about most reveals where we trust God the least. Man, man, just like knife in my heart. What we worry about most reveals where we trust God the least. And God has been challenging me to trust me with, 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 and trust him with my kids. And so I want you to think about what have you been worrying about lately? Is it COVID? Is it vaccines or no vaccines? Is it the politics in Afghanistan? And I mean, we're, we're all overwhelmed. We're, we're all trying to just navigate through this stuff and make sense of the current climate in the world. And what do we do? Are you worried about your job? Worried about a decision that you have to make? You worried about a relationship? What are you most worried about? Because can I challenge you that maybe it's right there in that exact place that you trust God the least. And God just says, man, would you just pray? Can you, can you just pray first? Because Paul says, I have learned the secret to contentment. And it starts by praying. Prayer's got to be our first response, not our last resort. And we pray because prayer replaces worry. Don't be anxious. Pray first. And here's number two. If you're taking notes, write this down. Prayer releases control. Prayer releases control. And, and some of you, you're, you're here today just for this one. This is yours. If you're wondering what point's yours, this, this may be it right here. Prayer releases control. Uh, Philippians 4, the second half of verse 6 says, By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, which is praise, Present your requests to God. Present your requests. I don't know how else to present something without having my hands like this. In fact, maybe you do that right now where you're at. Just present your requests to God. This is how you do it. And what we're saying is, Lord, here's my request. Here's my need. Here's what I'm asking you for. But I'm doing it with open hands. Which says you can either take it, you can bless it, or you can leave it. But I'm saying, Lord, I'm going to present my request to you. And then in 1 Peter, verse 5 and 7, it says it this way about anxiety. The writer says, cast all your anxiety on him. Why? Because he cares for you. And so we're going to present our request. But when it comes to anxiety, we're going to cast it on him because he cares for you. And, and, and that, that Greek word cast is really just meaning get rid of it. <laughs> I, I remember learning how to fish with my dad as a young kid. And fishing is not like my go-to. It's not my thing. Um, I don't do a lot of it now, but I remember as a young kid going out in the boat with my dad and just hoodie on, freezing. I mean, way too early. The fish aren't up. There's nobody else out there. And, and just not really enjoying myself, but what I did enjoy was learning to cast. Because catching fish was great when you got them. But other than that, it was the cast. Learn, learning how to, how, to, how to just take that bad boy and then zzzz, zoom. Wow, that was pretty cool. I liked it. But I liked it so much, I wanted to cast and reel it in and back. And then cast it again and then bring it back. And my dad had to tell me, no, no, no. If you're going to cast it, cast it. And, and the Lord is saying the same thing with our anxiety in 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast it. If you're going to get rid of it, get, get rid of it. Pr prayer releases control. And so in your prayers, cast it on the Lord because he cares for you. Watch this. It can't be God's problem and your problem at the same time. It's gotta be one or the other. And so cast it on the Lord. In prayer, we fully release it. I release my issue to you, God. You, you can take it. In prayer, I cast my anxiousness. I cast my depression, my sadness, my frustration on him. Now it belongs to Jesus. And, and, and we gotta be careful because you don't wanna get stuck in what I call the panic loop. Or maybe you, you've heard it called the, the cycle of anxiety, which is for, for control people, th this is you. I'm anxious about something. I want to control it. I'm worried about losing control. I try to control it again. I'm anxious again. Maybe I should pray. It's too late. The panic loop got you. It's too late. Prayer has got to be the first response, not the last resort. You've got to stop the cycle before it begins. Pray first. Let prayer be your first response, not the last resort. And so when we pray, prayer replaces worry. When we pray first, prayer releases control. Here's number three. Prayer regulates our thinking. And this is so powerful. Now, prayer regulates our thinking. And if you're in Philippians still, you got your finger in there in the New Testament, Philippians 4, verse 8. It says, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And so i got to ask you, is there anything good in your life right now? I mean, i got to believe there is. 
if you have breath on your lungs, if you're healthy, if God has blessed you with children, if you're fortunate enough to have a job, if you're in a place where you experience moments of love and affection from a loved one, you have family around you, if there's anything excellent or praiseworthy, the scriptures tell us, think about those things. And so in prayer, I'm thanking God. Thank you for that. In Colossians 3, 2, I really love this. It says, I set my mind on things above, not on earthly things. I, I'm, I'm, and I love that image of setting. It's almost like I'm, I'm, taking, I'm taking this and I'm placing it up here. I, I'm not here, I'm here. I set my mind on things above, not on earthly things. Uh, one of the habits I've gotten into recently, which has been fantastic, it just changed my life. So simple. Uh, is, is making sure that at the top of my phone, every morning is the verse of the day. In fact, I brought a picture with you so you can see it. But you can see on the top of my phone there is the verse of the day. I created what's called a widget. And so no matter what time I wake up, I, I grab the phone, there's the alarm. And the very first thing I do is literally set my mind on things above. I'm setting my mind on God's word. I'm setting my mind in heaven. I'm tapping into eternal things. I'm setting my mind on things above. And if you notice on that picture below it are a bunch of earthly things. YouTube, Instagram, email, text message, my calendar, the weather. I mean, even the weather's a distraction sometimes. I'm setting my mind on things above. I'm, I'm literally placing my mind up in heaven. And you, you may not realize it, but that's what prayer is. Prayer isn't God coming down to us, it's us going up to him. At salvation, Jesus comes down, humbles himself. In prayer, we say, Lord, I'm setting my mind on things above. We can't let Instagram, we can't let TMZ, you pick your poison, whatever it is that sucks you away from the things of God and gets you on earthly things. And, and just because they're not God things doesn't make them bad things. But if they pull you away from setting your mind and focusing in a season where all you have is anxiety and depression, then don't give your mind to more things that cause anxiety and more depression. It may be the local news. It may be driving to work and all of a sudden there's a guy that, that honks the horn or, 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 or waves to you with one finger and all of a sudden now you're raging and I'm so fragile, I'm about to burst. Or, or all of a sudden I'm so weighted down by a message I just got, I'm about to sink into depression. No, I I'm, I'm set my mind on things above. Here's number four. Prayer rejects the enemy. Prayer rejects the enemy. In Luke chapter 10, verses 17 through 19, there's a group of disciples that were sent out and they're excited to report back to Jesus and this is what they tell them. Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name, not in my name, but in your name. And then Jesus replies, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you, somebody say you, that's me, that's you, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. I, I, I have a friend named, named Greg. In fact, he's one of the pastors here. And I love Greg because he's so influential. Uh, he gets us into places where I normally don't have access to. In fact, he, he, he's, he's Mr. All Access. And a few weeks ago, we were in Alabama and we were at a conference. We found ourselves backstage. And there was a gentleman that approached us and said, hey, what are you guys doing back here? And I was like, ah, I'm with Greg. I, I don't know, ask him. And Greg is so smooth. He just kind of schmoozes and he, he, he woos people. That, that woo is, is W-O-O, that's winning others over. And I got a little bit, but Greg's got a lot of it. And he starts pointing out the shoes like, hey, man, I like those Jordans. And you're looking good, looking smooth. All of a sudden, we find ourselves walking backstage to places where we shouldn't have been. I'm like, go ahead, Greg. <laughs> Let's go, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I, I, I'm with him because we got access. Jesus has given you and I that same access. In fact, he's given us all access to his power and his authority to trample on snakes and spiritual scorpions and demons in this dark world. He's given us power and all access and authority to rebuke the enemy in Jesus' name. In fact, we can do that right now. We take authority against the devil in Jesus' name. And so whatever you're going through, you can do that. Jesus says, I've given you that power. It's in Jesus' name that Satan has to go. Anxiety does not control me in Jesus' name. Depression has to flee, it will not consume me in Jesus' name. I will not be overwhelmed or overcome because it's by Jesus' name that I can take authority over those things. Prayer rejects the enemy. 
Prayer rejects the enemy. We gotta lead with prayer. In the midst of what you're experiencing that may be weighty and crushing you, pray first. Prayer rejects the enemy. Here's the fifth point, my last point. Prayer relies on Jesus. Prayer relies on Jesus. And this is so simple, but I love it because it's the most important one. In Philippians 4.13, Paul's sitting there in prison. He writes this last verse after experiencing everything. He says, I can do all this through him. And who's him? It's Jesus. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. And what's he saying? He's saying, Jesus is with me. I can do all this pressure, not enough in me. I'm deflating. Have a lot, have very little. People remember me and think about me or they forgot about me. Rebuked, in prison, beaten, in shackles, physically or maybe spiritually. Paul says, I can do all this. Why? Because of him who strengthens me. He's with me. He's with me. Um, I, I told you that it was my son's birthday. He turned four this past week. And so I brought a picture with me to show you exactly what it looked like that morning. There he is holding his balloon. He's in his Spider-Man outfit and, and uh, he's holding that balloon. That's one of the ones I didn't pop. Uh, but one of the things that I, I've realized, even though he's getting older and now he's four years old, there are certain things that he hasn't outgrown. And one of the things that he hasn't outgrown is asking me to come with him wherever he goes. In fact, he says it this way, Daddy, will you come with me? Daddy, will you go with me? D Daddy, can, can you come with me? Daddy, will you go with me? And I mean, he wants me to go to the bathroom with him and he wants me to go down the hall to get his toy. He wants me to go outside and watch him swing the bat and hit golf balls. And Daddy, will you go with me? Daddy, will you come with me? And, and, and if I can be honest, at some point, I'm like, man, I, like, if I could just get a minute from you, son. Like, I, 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 don't mind, I don't mind going to the bathroom with you, but you don't need to come to the bathroom with me if you know what I'm talking about. Like, Daddy, can you go with me? Daddy, can you come with me? He's just with me. And, and the Lord just reminded me, he said, Travis, listen, don't rush this. Don't rush this season of your life with your son because he's not always gonna be like this. He may grow out of it. In fact, he's going to grow out of it. And I was reminded just to enjoy it and then it, it really just, just kind of settled with me that the Lord is maybe looking at you and looking at me and looking at his kids saying, when did you and I stop relying on him and saying, daddy, will you come with me? Father in heaven, Will you go where I go? Daddy, will you come with me? As the Lord's looking at us and inviting us to that, it's a reminder to me that when, when I'm with him, he's with me every step of the way. And the blessing in that is if God is with me, then I can declare what Paul declared, that I can do all of this because he's with me. Daddy, will you go with me? Father in heaven, will you go with me? So it doesn't matter what happens. If, if I lose the house, if the marriage ends, if, the, if my kids get on drugs, if I lose my job, it doesn't matter what happens. I'm so focused on praying first that the anxiety and the depression has no weight over me. It will not consume me. I will be anxious for nothing, but instead in every situation by prayer, I will come to my creator and say, Father, will you go with me? Will you go with me? I, I've, I've learned to pray first. Prayer's gotta be my first response and not my last resort. I'm too busy praying to worry. I, I'm, I've, I've learned the secret to contentment. I, I'm praying in all situations. I've replaced worry. I've released control. I, I, I think differently now. I've rejected the enemy in Jesus' name. He's got to go. Anxiety's got to go. Depression has to go. And I'm fully relying on Jesus because all authority in heaven and on earth belong to him. And so before we go into that meeting, I'm going to pray first. And before I get into that back and forth with my spouse, I'm going to pray first. Before I open up the bank, the bank account, because I, I know there may not be much in there, I'm going to pray first. I'm going to pray first. I'm going to pray first. Before I start kicking and screaming and losing it at my job, freaking out about what's happening or may not be happening in the world, I'm going to pray first. And so that's the invitation today for all of us. In fact, I'm going to lead you in a prayer in just a moment. And, and I'm going to invite you wherever you are, uh, unashamedly, 
to lift your hands in a posture of surrender and a posture of victory. Saying, Lord, I surrender everything to you. The weight of the world that I feel, the pressures of life, whether I have or I don't, because I've learned the secret to contentment, that I won't be anxious for anything, but instead in all situations, by prayer and thanksgiving, I will present my request to you. And I'm trusting that there is a peace from you, God, that is beyond my understanding. And so I'm lifting my hands. And so would you just do that right now? Wherever you're, wherever you're joining from, if you're watching this later, if you're at home, you're in the kitchen, or you gather with some friends in the backyard, just lift your hands. Would you just by faith do that now? And, and we're saying, Lord, I surrender that to you. But I also declare by faith in a posture of victory that I have your peace. You're giving me your peace. And so everybody bow your heads, close your eyes, and just pray with me. And if you need to release that now or begin a relationship with Jesus or just a deeper relationship with him, I want to lead you in that prayer. Everybody's heads bowed, eyes closed, hands lifted to say, Dear Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I struggle. And I admit that right now I am in desperate need of a Savior. I, I believe that on the cross, you conquered my sin. You, you paid for my penalty. And through the resurrection, have given me everlasting life. I believe that now. I confess you as Lord. I confess you as my Savior. Holy Spirit, fill my life. Give me a new mind, new, new strength that's only from you, and a perfect peace so that I can walk through storms. No matter if things are good or things are bad, I can declare that, God, you're always good because I have your perfect peace. That's beyond understanding. As your head is bowed and your eyes are closed, wherever you're joining us from, wherever you prayed that prayer, in a moment I just want to pray an extra blessing over you. But would you let someone know? Let someone know that you're praying that with us. Let someone know next to you or let our, our team know by texting the word SAVE to 52525 or you can click that button next to us. Just let us know uh, that you're making a decision. You're taking a next step with Jesus. And so as your heads are bowed, eyes still closed, Jesus, thank you for every life that was changed today. Thank you for the peace that is increasing and the anxiety that's being lifted. The depression that's, that, that's being pushed away. We're pushing back the darkness and receiving your grace and your peace today. We bless you and we bless them. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody at home said, everybody watching said, amen, amen, and amen. Hey, Rock family, now we want to uh, just go into an extended time of worship, which is through our giving. And we receive our tithes and offerings because as a church, we don't just come together as a holy huddle or, or, or just spread the good news, but we also want to literally be hands and feet of Jesus Christ wherever we go. In fact, I want to read a verse to you. It's in Hebrews chapter 13, uh, verse 16. And it says, And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. And so we're saying, man, thank you for giving. D don't forget to, to, to share and give a portion of what God has given you to the church, to him, to Jesus, so that he can go and minister to people. And it's happening all across the world. And so we want to say thank you already for giving. Uh, in fact, I'm thinking about what's happening in our city here locally in San Diego, and we're celebrating some of our local military. And we have people that have donated their time, their efforts. They're giving away haircuts. They're giving away clothes, meals, backpacks for kids going back to schools. And so when you give, you need to know that this literally happens, that, that people give, they do good, they share with others, and that sacrifice, Hebrews says, God is pleased with. And so that's what worship through our giving looks like. It's receiving of our tithes and offerings, giving it back to God, trusting that he knows best what to do with it. We get to be a partner with him, be the hands and feet of Jesus. And when you do it for others, it's as if you did it for him. And so we're going to give in just a moment. In fact, the easiest way for you to do that is by texting the word give to 52525. Uh, join us and be a part of what God is doing in and through this church. And we want to say thank you for giving. My wife and I give. We're a part of it. Uh, we love seeing the mission of Jesus advanced here locally and across the globe. So we want to say thanks again. Uh, let me pray for the giving. Jesus, thank you that we get a chance to partner with you. You invite us into your mission to not just uh, speak your word, but do your word. Literally be the word, your hands and feet. And then through the giving, as we receive the tithes and offerings right now, we pray that you would bless it 
that you would breathe on it, Holy Spirit, you'd multiply it, and as it's being used, it would go out and change lives here locally and across the globe. And we say thank you for this chance to do it. May it be worship to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We pray it in his name, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Such a great sermon. Amen. Well, before we wrap up, I just want to let everyone know we've got a lot of amazing events coming up over the next month or so. So if you're interested in learning more about these ways to connect, visit our digital bulletin. Yes. You can go to scrock.com slash Sunday Bulletin or text Bulletin to 52525 to get access. Yes, and one of those opportunities is the Women's Conference coming up on September 18th called The Feast. This is gonna be an online conference that is designed to be experienced in community around the table. So ladies, we're encouraging, we're encouraging you gather together around all kinds of table, whether it's a coffee table, picnic table, tray table, whatever it is, get together. Let's feast on the word of God together. To learn more about the feast, visit scrock.com backslash feast or text feast to 52525. Yep, that's not all. Another thing that I'm so fired up about, let me get a little drum roll, okay, please. Okay. Floodgate! Oh! That's right, friends. Floodgate is back on September yes. 24th. If you've never experienced that, it's our night with churches from all over San Diego dedicated to worship. Yay. Giving our adoration and praise to God is truly the most valuable way that we can spend our time. Thank this is going to be a powerful night that we promise you, you don't want to miss. So to learn more, visit sdrock.com slash floodgate or text floodgate to 52525. Yes. Make sure you go well, everyone. We hope you have the best week. Be sure to follow us on social at The Rock San Diego and head over to YouTube our YouTube channel for more rock messages and content. We love you so much, family. We hope to see you soon. Hey, New Rock family, Pastor Miles here. Got an update from my wife, Debbie. She is home. We are so excited to have her back. I just want to tell you thank you so much for your prayers and your support. It was a very difficult journey had a lot of hard conversations with the doctors and nurses about her future and how long she would be in the hospital. First, it was weeks. It only turned out to be one week and, and, and there was also a chance that she may not make it. So we're so happy she's home. I wanna thank all of you. Thank all the people at Scripps Hospital. Um, you guys were couldn't have been better, couldn't have been more loving and gracious. Um, but I just wanna thank my global, fam global family for your support. Listen, go to my Instagram at Miles McPherson to get information and look at the story. If you haven't heard all the journey, uh, it was, it was, God is faithful. That's what I got out of it. One of many things, God is faithful. So God bless you. See you soon.